Welcome to the deep dive. We uh, we take complex topics, try to boil them down, and really get to the heart of what matters. Just you up to speed fast. Exactly. And today we're diving into something pretty central to modern security: Zscaler's architecture and uh, its underlying principles. It's a fascinating area. It is. And our source material today is actually, interestingly, some exam practice questions. Yeah. But look, we're not just prepping for a test here. No, not at all. We're using these questions more like a map, you know, to really understand the core ideas, those aha moments behind how cloud security works today, specifically with Zscaler. Right. Using them to unlock the why behind the why. Precisely. We want you walking away really getting how Zscaler works fundamentally. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpack this. We're going to use these questions to navigate some really key bits of secure access. Let's start right at the core. In Zscaler's cloud setup, what's the main component doing the heavy lifting for, say, policy enforcement and checking who users are? Ah, uh, okay. That would be the Zscaler enforcement node, or uh, ZAN for short. Let's see. Yeah, think of it as the, the real workhorse in the Zscaler cloud. It's the core piece. Its job is basically to enforce all your security rules and authenticate users. So it sees the traffic. Exactly. It inspects traffic in line, mm. right in the data path. And it's applying those policies you've set up. Allow this, block that, making sure connections are secure, compliant. Doesn't matter where the user is. Mm. That sounds central, all right. Ooh. What kind of like operational headache does that zine in reduce for security teams compared to the old way, maybe? Oh, huge difference. Think about managing fleets of firewalls, VPN mm. concentrators, right. all that hardware. Right. Patching updates. Exactly. With the ZN, it's cloud-based. Policies are central, pushed out globally instantly. You're not managing boxes anymore. So you manage the rules, not the routers. Pretty much. It simplifies things massively, especially mm -hmm. with everyone working everywhere now, much less overhead. Okay, that makes sense for traffic going out to the internet. Powerful yeah. gatekeeper. But uh, what about the other way? Accessing internal apps, stuff inside the company network. That seems trickier. Yeah, different challenge entirely. For that, you need to look at app connectors, specifically within Zscaler Private Access or ZPA. App connectors. Okay, what's their job? Their main function is providing these secure outbound-only connections from your private apps out to the Zscaler cloud. Outbound-only. Why is that specific phrasing so important? Ah, uh, well, that's the key design choice. It's fundamental because they connect out. You don't need to open any inbound firewall ports. Ah, uh, okay. No holes punched in the firewall facing the internet. Precisely. Traditional VPNs or just exposing an app directly often required that. Big security risk, app connectors tunnel out using TLS encryption. Lightweight tunnels. So the apps stay hidden. Hmm dark to the internet. Exactly. It massively shrinks your attack surface. It's really foundational for zero trust access to internal resources. And zero trust, just to remind everyone listening, means? Basically, trust nothing by default. Verify everything, user, device, context, before you grant access. Doesn't matter if they're inside or outside, every connection is assessed. Right, so these app connectors, they let users get to internal apps without VPNs without opening the network up. Mm. Can you maybe give a quick scenario? Where does this really solve a problem? Sure, think about um, an old legacy system, maybe an on-prem ERP or some internal database. Yeah. Used to need a clunky VPN, maybe full network access for remote users. Or you poked holes in the firewall. Yeah, I can picture that. Headaches. Right. With app connectors, a user gets secure access just to that specific application, not the whole network segment. Ah, granular. Very. And you set this up without messing with complex firewall rules or network redesigns. Much simpler for segmentation, much better for security, hmm. especially for those older apps that are hard to secure otherwise. Okay, got it. So we've secured how users connect, but you mentioned zero trust involves the device too, right? It's not just who connects, but what they're connecting from. Absolutely critical. A valid user on a dodgy device is a huge risk factor. So how does Zscaler check if the device itself is, you know, trustworthy before letting it connect? Okay, that brings us to the device posture profile. Device posture profile. Yep. It's a feature that lets admins set access rules based on the device's health, its security posture. Like what kind of things? Oh, you can check for lots of stuff. Is, is the antivirus running and up to date? What OS version is it? Is the disk encrypted? Is it managed by the company? Things like that. So you define what healthy means for your organization. Exactly. You set the baseline. The goal is simple. Only devices that meet your security requirements get access to resources. Doesn't matter if it's a corporate laptop or maybe even a BYOD device in some cases. Hmm. 
That feels like a really crucial layer, especially now with so many different devices connecting. It is. You can't just trust the user identity anymore. The device state is paramount. What's a key security win from using device posture? Maybe something teams don't realize at first. I'd say it's moving from being reactive to proactive. How so? Instead of finding out a compromised device got in after the fact, device posture stops it before it even accesses anything sensitive if it fails the checks. Ah, prevention versus detection. Right. It cuts down that window for attackers dramatically, and it helps enforce a consistent security level across all devices trying to connect, even the ones you don't directly manage, like personal devices accessing certain apps. Makes sense. Okay, so we have all these rules now. User identity, device posture, application access policies. Mm. That's a lot to manage. It can be, yeah. So how does an admin figure out why something happened? Like if a user can't get somewhere, or maybe they can, they shouldn't, how do you trace the policy decisions? Good question. For that, you use a tool called Policy Trace. It's right there in the Zscaler admin portal. Policy Trace, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. honestly, it's indispensable for troubleshooting. What does it show you? It gives you a really detailed step-by-step -step breakdown of how policies were applied to a specific user session, like forensic level. Wow. You see every rule that was checked, how it was evaluated, did it match, did it not, and what the final decision was for that connection. Allow, block, isolate, whatever. So it's like a log, but specifically for policy decisions. Exactly, but much more targeted and easier to read for this purpose than just digging through raw logs. Super valuable when someone calls saying, I can't access X, or even verifying a new policy is working right. Yeah, I can see that. Can you give a quick example of how policy trace saves time, a common scenario? Oh, definitely. So user calls, can't get to the new finance app, classic help desk ticket. Yep. Just... Without policy trace, you're guessing, is it network, firewall, VPN? The app itself, you check logs everywhere. It takes ages. Been there. Right. With Policy Trace, you plug in the user's details, maybe the time, trace their failed attempt, and boom, it might tell you straight up, locked, device posture check, failed missing OS patch XYZ. Uh, specific. Or blocked, application segment not configured for user group marketing. It points you right to the specific policy or configuration issue, turns hours of guesswork into minutes of targeted fixing. That sounds incredibly useful like a detective for your policies. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Okay, one last major piece here. We've talked about users, devices, policies. But how do users actually prove who they are to Zscaler in the first place, securely, smoothly, mm -hmm. especially in big companies? Right, the authentication piece. You need it to be robust, but also not a nightmare for users. Yeah, seamless is key. What's the recommended way to integrate, say, corporate logins with Zscaler? The standard and generally the best practice is SAML Federation. SAML, okay. Yeah, security assertion markup language. It's the go-to method for linking Zscaler with your company's existing identity provider. Think uh, Azure Active Directory, Okta, Ping Identity, th those systems. So it uses the logins people already have. Exactly. It enables secure single sign-on SSO. Users log in once with their normal work credentials, maybe using multi-factor authentication. MFA. And then they get access to their Zscaler protected resources without having to log in again and again. It's secure and convenient. SSO is definitely a big plus for users. But thinking purely security, what's a key advantage of SAML beyond just the convenience compared well, to older ways maybe? Well, a major one is that authentication stays centralized with your identity provider, your IDP. Why is that good? Because your IDP is your single source of truth for identity. It's where you enforce your strong password policies, your MFA requirements, maybe conditional access rules based on risk. Ah, uh, so Scalar doesn't need to handle all that itself. Correct. Zscaler doesn't store user passwords. It trusts the assertion, the proof of identity that comes from your trusted IDP via SAML. Yeah. This means less credential sprawl. Easier user management. Someone leaves the company, you disable them in the central directory. Their Zscaler access is gone too. It ties access directly to your authoritative identity system. That makes a lot of sense. Central control. It's key for consistency and security posture. Okay, so a final thought then for everyone listening. We've unpacked these building blocks, ZDN, app connectors, device posture, policy trace, and ML. How might really understanding these fundamentals of cloud security change your perspective? How do you think about securing data, securing access in this world where the perimeter, well, it's basically everywhere and nowhere now? 